and welcome to the session on ratios. Hi, I am Ravi and this is my Twitter handle. You can use that to provide feedback. In this session, we look at some of the common ratios, some of the common terms which are used with ratios. We'll also try and understand what is componendo and dividendo. We'll look, uh, we'll look at the basic ideas behind proportion and then we'll look at some sort of examples. To begin with, for some of the common ratios, some of the common terms which are used are compounded ratio. That is when you have two ratios A by B and C by D, then their compounded ratio is AC by BD. The duplicate ratio of A is to B is when you do the square of the values, that is A square is to B square. The triplicate, well, as you can see and guess, is A cube is to B cube. The subduplicate ratio is when you take the root of the ratios. The sub triplicate ratio is when you take the cube root of the ratios. The reciprocal will as the name suggests, if the ratio is A is to B, the reciprocal is B is to A. When it comes to componendo and dividendo terms which are very regularly used, probably you did a lot of questions on them when you were in class 6 or 7 states in case you have forgotten that if A by B is equal to C by D. Given that A and B are not equal, then A plus B by A minus B is equal to C plus D by C minus D. And why does this happen? This happens because if you add 1 to both the sides, as you can see here, I have added a 1 here and I have added a 1 here. What do you get? You get A plus B by B and C plus D by D. Very similarly, if you had subtracted 1, you would have got a minus b by b and c minus d by d. Now, when you divide this first equation by the second equation, what will you get? You will get a plus b by a minus b and c plus d by c minus d. And that effectively, my friends, is componendo and dividendo. Now, to move on or to understand what is proportion, a, b, c and d are said to be in proportion if a by b is equal to c by d. However, they are said to be in continued proportion if a by b is equal to b by c is equal to c by d. As you can see, the difference between proportion and continued proportion is that this extra term is there which is b by c. Another interesting property that the proportions express is this which I have highlighted here. What it says is, if let's say these are in proportion, that is A by B is equal to C by D is equal to E by F. Then if you add up all the numerators and you add up all the denominators, the ratio remains unchanged. It was K earlier, it is still K. Not only that, if you multiply the terms respectively, let's say for this particular ratio, you multiply both of them with the same value. You multiply both C and D with the same value and you multiply E and F with the same value and then you add them up, it will still remain k. As you can see here, I multiplied a and b with p, I multiplied c and d with q, and I multiplied e and f with r. As you can see, the ratio has remained the same. However, if you raise all of them to the same part, let's say you make it a cube by b cube, c cube by d cube, e cube by f cube, then your ratio, well, as you might think is obvious, would become k cube. So these are some of the tips and tricks which you can use to find out the answer easily or get to the answer in a quicker fashion. Now let us look at some solved examples on these ideas. But before solving these solved examples, I request you try them out in case you are not able to solve them or then and only then you should look at the solutions. You can pause the video here if you like. Just and just inserting an edit here. I'm sorry guys if you spend some time on question number three. It is incorrect. Actually, it is not incorrect. It leads to an equation which will not lead to a conclusive answer. So I'm skipping it for the time being. Sorry about that. You may continue the video from here. Let's continue. So in the first question, I'm given in a particular mixture, A and B are in the ratio of 2 is 2. 3 okay and b and c are in the ratio of 4 is to 5 
So, I am supposed to find out the overall ratio of A's to B's to C. For that, I need to look at what is common. Here B is common. So, B represents 3 here. In the second one, B is common. So, let me just do bold that. Okay. So, it is B here. Now, to get an overall answer, this should be the same or this should become common. And how do I take it to a common value? Well, for that, I will need the LCM of 3 and 4. As you would know, the LCM of 3 and 4 is 12. So, I will replace the B part with 12 in both cases. That means the first one becomes something is to 12 and the second one becomes 12 is to something. So, if it is 2 is to 3, how much is it uh, is to 12? 2 is to 3, 3 is multiplied by 4. 2 be, will be also multiplied by 4. So, this becomes 8 is to 12. Whereas, 4 is to 5. So, this was multiplied by 3. So, this becomes 12 is to 15. Which means, the ratio that I was looking at, which is A is to B is to C, will be how much? A is to B is to C will be A is 8, B is 12 and C is 15. As you can see, we have very easily and very clearly found out the overall ratio. Once again, the method for finding out the overall ratio is, you look at what is common in the given ratios and make that equal. After that, it is just combining them. Let us look at one more example. In this, income of A and B are in the ratio of 6 and 5. So let's say the incomes are 6x and 5x, whereas their expenses are in the ratio of 3 is to 4. So let's say their expenses are 3y and 4y. So these are their incomes and these are their expenses. Now, B says one third of his income. So what does that mean? How much does B save first of all? B's income is 5x, his expenses are 4y, so his savings of B are 5x minus 4y, which is how much? Which is actually equal to, given to me as one third of his income and his income is 5x. So this gives me the equation. So this is 1 by 3 of 5x is equal to 5x minus 4y. So this gives me what? 15x minus 12y is equal to 5x or this gives me 10x is equal to 12y or this gives me x is equal to 6y by 5. So now that I have the value of x in the ratio of y or y in the ratio of x. I can also write this as y is equal to 5x by 6. I use either of them depending upon what I need. Now, I need the ratio of savings of a and b. Now, let me calculate the savings of a and b in the terms of uh, say x because I already have savings of b as 5x by 3. So let me calculate savings of A in terms of X. Savings of A. Income of X is 6x whereas expenses are 3y. I can replace this y by 5x by 6. So this means this becomes 6x minus 5x by 2 or 2.5x. So this is 3.5x. So what is the ratio of Savings of A, which is 3.5x, is to savings of B, which is 5x by 3. Now, as you can see that this is not a very clear ratio. The ratios that uh, are normally given in the options are something like 3 is to 5 or 5 is to 7 and something like that. To get that, what do we need to do? See, this is 5 by 2. Sorry, this is the first one is 7 by 2. And the second one is 5 by 3. I've just cancelled out x. Now, to get it into a better format, I can multiply the entire thing by 6. If I multiply the entire thing by 6, what will I get? I will get the required ratio as 21 is to 10. And that is the ratio 
of savings of A and B. So as you can see in this question, what we first did, we took the ratio of the expense incomes, then the expenses and then the savings. As I said earlier, question three is incorrect. So now let us just look at question number four, which is actually really, really simple. All that you have to do here is notice a couple of things. First of all, the coefficients of F and E, D and C, B and A are the same. So all you got to do is whatever was the ratio original, you have to cube it. Why do you have to cube it? Because it is becoming F cube by E cube, D cube by C cube, B cube by A cube. So what will be your answer? Will it be 3 by 2 the whole cube? No, it would have been 3 by 2 the whole cube if A, C, E were in the numerator and D, D, F were in the denominator. But that is not the case. Now B, D, F are in the numerator and A, C, E are in the denominator. Which means my answer will not be 3 by 2 whole cube but 2 by 3 whole cube or I can say my answer will be 8 by 27. And that is the value that we were looking for. With this, I'd like to wrap up the session. I'm sorry about the edit and the wrong question, guys. You can provide feedback via Twitter at my Twitter handle, which is at the rate Ravi Handa, or you can email me on my mail ID, which is ravihanda at gmail.com. Thank you.